writing, said the students. Goodness, said Stuart in disgust. Don't you children know how to write yet? Certainly we do, yelled one and all. Well, so much for that then, said Stuart. Social studies comes next, cried Elizabeth Gardner eagerly. Social studies? Hmm, never heard of them, said Stuart. Instead of taking up any special subject this morning, wouldn't it be a good idea if we all just talked about something? The students glanced around, glanced around at each other in expectancy. Couldn't we talk about the way it feels to hold a snake in your hand, and then it winds itself around your wrist, said Arthur Greenlaw. Hmm, well, we could, but I'd rather not, said Stuart. Couldn't we talk about vice, pleaded Lydia Lacency. Nope, said Stuart. Let's try again. Could we talk about the fat woman at the circus and how she had hair all over her chin, begged Isidore Feinberg reminiscently. No, said Stuart. I'll tell you, let's talk about the king of the world. He looked all around the room, hopefully to see how the children liked that idea. There isn't any king of all the world, said Harry. What's the diff, said Stuart. There ought to be one. Kings are old fashioned, said Harry. Well, all right, then let's talk about the chairman of the world. The world gets into a lot of trouble because it has no chairman. I would like to be chairman of the world myself. You're too small, said Mary. Oh, fish feathers, said Stuart. Size has nothing to do with it. It's temperament and ability to that temperament and ability that count. The chairman has to have ability and he must know what's important. How many of you know what's important? Up went all the hands. Very good, said Stuart, cocking one leg across the other and shoving his hands into the pocket of his jacket. Henry, you tell us, what's important? Hmm, a shaft of sunlight at the end of a dark afternoon, a note in music, and the way the back of a baby's neck smells if its mother's kept it clean, said Harry. That's correct, said Stuart. Those are important things. You forgot one thing, though. Mary, what did Henry forget? He forgot ice cream with chocolate sauce on it, said Mary quickly. Exactly, said Stuart. Ice cream is important. Well now, if I'm going to be chairman of the world this morning, we've got to have rules. Otherwise, it will be too confusing, with everyone running every which way and helping himself to things and nobody behaving. We've got to have some laws if we're going to play this game. Can anyone suggest good laws for the world? Albert raised his hand. Don't eat mushrooms. They might be poisonous toadstools, he suggested. Hmm, that's not a law, said Stuart. That's merely a bit of friendly advice. Very good advice, Albert, but advice and law are not the same. Law is much more solemn than advice. Law is extremely solemn. Anybody think of any laws for the whole world? Hmm, not swiping anything, suggests John, very solemnly. Very good, said Stuart. Good law. Never poison anything but rats, said Anthony. Hmm, that's not good, said Stuart. It's unfair to the rats. A law has to be fair to everybody. Anthony looked very sulky. But rats are unfair to us, he said. Rats are objectionable. Mm, I know that they are, said Stuart. But from a rat's point of view, poison is objectionable. A chairman has to see all sides to a problem. Have you got a rat's point of view? asked Anthony. You look a little like a rat. No, replied Stuart. I have more the point of a view of a mouse, which is very different. I see things whole. It's obvious to me that rats are underprivileged. They've never been able to get out in the open. Rats don't like the open, said Agnes. That's because whenever they come out, somebody socks them. Rats might like the open if they were allowed to use it. Any other ideas for laws? Agnes raised her hand. There ought to be a law against fighting. Mm, that's impractical, said Stuart. Men like to fight, but you're getting warm, Agnes. No scrapping, said Agnes, tim Agnes timidly. Stuart shook his head. Absolutely no being mean, suggests Mildred. Very fine law, said Stuart. When I am chairman, anyone who is mean is anyone who is mean to anyone else is going to really get it. That won't work, remarked he Herbert. Some people are just naturally mean. Albert is always being mean to me. I'm not saying that it'll work, said Stuart. It's a good law and we'll give it a try. We might give it a try right here and now. Somebody do something mean to somebody else. Well, Harry, Harry, you be mean to Catherine. Wait a minute. Now, what's that you've got in your hand, Catherine? It's a tiny little pillow stuffed with sweet balsam. Does it say, for you I pine, for you I balsam on it? Yes, said Catherine. Do you like it very much, said Stuart? Yes, I do, said Catherine. Okay, Harry, grab it and take it away. Harry ran over to where Catherine sat, gra sat grabbed the little pillow from her hand, and ran back to his seat while Catherine screamed. 
Now then, said Stuart in a fierce voice, hold on, my good people, while your chairman consults the book of rules. He pretended to thumb through a book. Here we are, page 492, absolutely no being mean. Page 560, Nick's on swiping anything. Harry just broke two laws, the law against being mean and the law against swiping. Let's get Harry and set him back before he becomes so mean people will hardly recognize him anymore. Come on. Stuart ran for the yard slick, stick, slid down like a fireman, fireman coming down on a pole in a firehouse. He ran towards Harry and the other children jumped up from their seat and raced down the aisles and crowded around Harry while Stuart demanded that he give up the little pilly, pillow. Harry looked frightened, although he knew it was just a test. He gave Catherine back the pillow. There, that worked pretty well, said Stuart. No being mean is a perfectly good law. He wiped his face with his handkerchief, for he was quite warm from the exertion of being chairman of the world. It had taken more running and leaping and sliding than he had imagined. Catherine was very much pleased to have her pillow back. Let's see that little pillow a minute, said Stuart, whose curiosity was beginning to get the better of him. Catherine showed it to him. It was about as long as Stuart was high, and Stuart, le Stuart suddenly thought what a fine, sweet-smelling bed it would make for him. He began to want the pillow himself. That's a pretty thing, said Stuart, trying to hide his eagerness. You don't want to sell it to me, do you? Oh, no, replied Catherine. It was a present. I suppose it was given you by a boy you met at Lake Hopcom last summer, and it reminds you of him, murmured Stuart dreamily. Yes, it was, said Catherine, blushing. Ah, said Stuart, summers are wonderful, aren't they, Catherine? Yes, and last summer was the most wonderful summer I ever had in all my life. I can imagine, replied Stuart. You're sure you wouldn't want to sell me that little pillow? Catherine shook her head. Don't know as I blame you, replied Stuart quietly. Summertime is important. It's like a shaft of sunlight. Or a note in music, said Elizabeth. Or the way the back of a baby's neck smells if its mother's kept him clean, said Marilyn. Stuart sighed. Never forget your summer times, my dears, he said. Well, I've got to be getting along. It's been a pleasure to know you all. Class dismissed. Stuart strode rapidly to the door, climbed into the car, and with a final wave of his hand, drove off in a northerly direction, while the children raced alongside and screamed, Goodbye! 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 They all wished they could have a substitute every day instead of their normal teacher. Whew! And that was the end of chapter 12. What was that even about, boys and girls? I don't know, that chapter was a little confusing. Apparently, Stuart decided to become a substitute teacher and really didn't teach the kids anything. So tell me what you thought. Tell me if that was a good chapter or a silly chapter. Leave me a message on my Google Classroom um, page and don't forget to click the turned in button after you've seen this video. Check back tomorrow for chapter 13. All right, boys and girls, have a good night.